Hey everybody, welcome to Youth again. This is May 3rd. We are still going through our To Be Honest series, so that's what we're still on. Tonight we're talking about dating, so we're going to redefine the term dating in God's terms. And we're going to take a look at dating and see that there is a biblical way to date. You can date, but there is a biblical way to do that and an unbiblical way to do that as well. Um, and as we get started this lesson, I do want to give credit to a preacher named Paul, Paul Washer. I did watch a few of his um, lessons while I was putting this one together and I enjoyed a few things that he said. So if you want to uh, look a little bit more into this, um, look up Mr. Paul Washer. When you have the opportunity to be a Christian, you get the first opportunity to die to yourself. This is a big part of what becoming a Christian is, to dying to yourself, becoming less self-focused and more giving. For many people, and maybe even many people who watch this very video, that doesn't sound like a lot of fun, does it? Um, it will not sound good to us. That's not going to sound good to anybody until you learn how to truly love God. When you begin to love God, you understand and you find joy in losing yourself and losing myself. The thought here is I don't want to become less of who I am. I want to become more of who I am. I want to find myself, which makes really good for a screen, a script for a movie, but in the real world and how God created the world, if we want to find out who we truly are, we can't start with trying to find out who we are in ourselves. We must first find out what who God is, and who we are in Christ. That is the first step of finding out who you are in Jesus. Matthew 10 says, To truly find life in abundance, you must what? You must lose your life. You must give up your own life. If you want to know what love is, romantic or general, you must find selflessness and die to yourself if you are truly going to find out what love is is. The biggest opportunity I've ever had to die to my own self was when I got married. When I got married and, and I realized that there's this whole nother person in my life and we live together now and we're in a relationship together now, that was the first opportunity I had to start dying to myself. And I lose my life little by little by little in my relationship with God, and in my marriage with Chelsea. Um, to consider what dating is, to find out what dating is, you need to take a moment and realize what marriage is. What is marriage, and then we can define and look at what dating is. But we need to start more of at a purpose and see what, let's, let's look at marriage. Marriage is a union created by God for two people to express the love that they have with God between each other. Marriage was created before the fall, which means what? Which means it was a perfect creation and created inside of a perfect world. When marriage was first instituted, it was before the fall, so it was perfect. Created in perfection. Marriage is a specific relationship designed to display the intimacy that we have with God. That's what marriage is. And that's the reason for a sexual relationship. Sex was created because with it develops an unbreakable bond between a man and a woman. That bond represents the bond that you have with God. That's what sex does. That's why it's a great thing. That's why it's very dangerous. That bond represents what you have with God, the intimacy that you have with God. When we move on and make that sexual bond with another person, that represents us breaking that bond that we have with Christ. That's why it's such a big deal. That's why sex can be such a big deal. Everything that you do right now, everything that you do right now, impacts your future marriage. And how you will lay down your life for your future spouse one day. What you are doing now affects your life later and affects your spouse later. Let's do a few disclaimers here. A few disclaimers here. What you do matters. It matters to God. 
It matters with your relationship to God. It matters to your future spouse. It matters to how your family is going to be, how you're going to interact with your family later on down the road. You are affecting all of that right now with how you live and especially with how you date and how you look at dating. Every time you watch porn, it hurts your future spouse and actually shows it actually shows you how to sexually abuse someone. That's what we do when we look at porn. Every time you become too intimate with someone, you allow them to affect your future spouse and their future spouse. Every time you flippantly tell someone you love them, you're making it harder for you to actually love your future spouse. We just studied the word love in the Greek and the Hebrew. You know how that word is supposed to be used now. We use that word love to express God's affection towards you. And now you're going to use that word with the girl you've been dating for three weeks. With the person you've known for two, three weeks. Would God like that? Do you want to use that same word, God, I love you, and you're going to use that same word, love, to signify a completely different relationship? Think about that word before you use it. Everything you do to create an emotional or sexual relationship with someone right now will have a deep impact on your marriage one day. You are determining what kind of marriage you will have, what kind of hardships you will have to cross. Every time you send a picture of yourself to someone, you are taking the beginning steps to destroy your marriage one day. Do you think that is a big deal? Is he worth the stability of your future marriage, or is she worth it? Is being with her possibly taking intimacy away from your wife one day? These are things we do need to think about. These are not things that are so far away that they're untouchable with our actions today. These are things we have to deal with and have to think about in the relationships that we have now. Everything you do makes your future marriage um, easier or harder. Everything you do to make your marriage harder later on makes divorce more and more and more possible. Almost every single person who's ever been divorced will tell you they did not go into that marriage initially thinking that it would be over one day. Start thinking about your marriage today. Start thinking about your future spouse today. Start thinking about what kind of spouse you're going to be today. Well, and we're thinking, some of us are thinking this maybe. Well, Cameron, dating isn't really a big deal. And everyone dates, uses the word love, and fools around a little bit. You're expected to, and that is very true. You are expected to do all of that by your so-called friends who hang around you, by different people in your school, by the different people that you know. You are expected to act like that. But here's the deal. God has expectations for you as well. God has expectations for you to live a righteous and good life in his expectations. And you will have to decide in your life tomorrow which of those expectations are you going to take more seriously. Are you going to take your expectations that your friends give you seriously or the expectations that God gives you more seriously? Which one do you love more? That's what it comes down to. Do you love your friends more or do you love God more? Do you love making everybody happy around you more than God? What's more important to you, your friends around you that would love nothing more than to use you and to get you to do what they do so that they can say their actions are okay. Because if you refuse to do what they tell you to, then that might mean that it's not okay for them to do. And that's what's going on. When people around you are expecting you to be in a sexual relationship and they say things like, man, you mean you haven't kissed your boyfriend or girlfriend yet? Man, y'all been dating for two years and you haven't slept with each other yet? Have you heard terms? Have you heard sentences like that? Have you heard people in your school talk like that? Of course. Man, you mean, tell me y'all been dating for four years now? Three years now? A whole year now? And you haven't slept with each other? What they're really saying, students, listen, what they're really saying 
is that I've done all this stuff with my significant other. If you don't do the same thing, that means I match, That means maybe I shouldn't have done it too. I need you to go ahead and do all the stuff with your boyfriend, with your girlfriend that I'm doing with mine so that it's okay, so that what I did is okay. That's what they're saying whenever they say, you mean you haven't? That's what they're saying. Trying to use you to make themselves feel better and to justify their own actions. Do you want to live up to their expectations or God's who loves you deeply with the Hebrew, the has said love. And he wants you simply because he loves you, not what you can do for him. So we look at dating. What should we do? What should we do now with our lives? Don't just, you don't need to just look at you all. We don't need to just look at you and say, don't date, don't have sex. We need to give you some ways and how to live, what should you be doing. So let's look at a few realizations that you need to have now, students. You need to have these, these realizations now. Realize, number one, that you are in no shape or form ready for marriage. You are not ready for marriage. You're just not. You're, which also means this, which means this. You're not ready for a relationship that mimics marriage which means what mimics marriage? A sexual relationship mimics marriage. A very intimate relationship mimics marriage. A relationship that's too far emotionally. You're too far emotionally attached to each other that you have all the joy, you give all your joy, you give all your happiness to someone. Those kind of relationships mimic marriage. You're not ready for marriage, so you're not ready for those relationships. Guys, one thing to the guys, one thing to the girls here. In this realization, guys, you are not ready for marriage. You're not ready. You may think you are. You may beat your chest and you may say, I'm ready for a wife. You are not. Guys, stop asking for girls to send pictures of their bodies to you. She's not your wife. Not only is that a sin, but you are leading her into sin as well. So not your sin is your fault and her sin is your fault at that point. Badgering a girl until she finally sends you a picture is sexual abuse. It doesn't have to be the act of sex itself to be a sexual sin. Girls, if a guy asks you for something on these lines, it is not your fault. Block his number, drop him, and say a prayer for him because he needs to change his ways. It's not your fault, girls, if a guy asks you for something. Just drop him. Girls, stop trying to find fulfillment and acceptance from guys with a sensual relationship. It's not fair for you because you will never find God-sized love from a guy your age right now. And it's not fair to the guy because it's not something he can supply to you. It's not something he can give you. It's not something he's able to give you. This will only lead to frustration. So don't go looking, for a, looking towards a guy for something that you can only get from God. Don't find fulfillment in a guy. Guys, don't find fulfillment in a girl your age. Find fulfillment in the, in the God that created you. So here's the, good, here's the big question. What does dating, what should dating look like? What's it supposed to look like? If you do wish to date now, that is fine. I'm not someone who's going to say, don't ever date, don't date. I dated when I was young and I was stupid sometimes and I was smart in some of my relationships. If you wish to date now, that is fine. But understand what you are supposed to do and understand how you are supposed to date. Here's, here's three specific things. First thing is have a simple relationship. Have a simple relationship. One that you can breathe in. If a girl or guy decides they want to complicate your relationship by getting too serious, have clear guidelines that you will not pass. And if someone wants you to pass those lines, end the relationship. Is that simple? It absolutely is. No, um, no considerations. Understand from the beginning that this relationship, nor any relationship, will not become between myself and my God. Secondly, you can ha you can hang out with someone. Go go out to eat with them. Go to a movie with them. Go to a game with them. You can spend time with each other and with each other's families without it getting complicated, without getting too emotionally invested, without getting sexually invested, you can have a relationship like that. It is possible. 
spend time with them. Spend time with their families, with their family. Have them spend time with your family. And remember, if they're unwilling to spend time with your family, how do you think they'll act with their family one day? Just spend time with them. Lastly, the purpose for dating now is to find someone to have fun. I'm sorry. The purpose for dating now is not to find someone to have fun with or to find joy or happiness in. You should never find yourself in a relationship, in a romantic relationship, and say, finally, 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 I have found love. How do you think that makes God feel? He's been throwing love at you your whole life. All you have to do is grab it. But it's not going to come from the 16-year-old male who's trying to insert his life, in, insert himself in your life. It comes from God. If you're in a relationship now, it is to practice interacting with someone of the other gender Learning how to respect another person inside a one-on-one relationship. Using that relationship to edify each other and to encourage each other. Use that relationship to, number one, practice becoming a man or a woman of God that you need to become. And number two, practice how to interact and to communicate inside a relationship. Simple. Edify each other in a relationship. That's what dating should look like. Well, when can you start actually thinking about serious relationships or courtships or marriage? I'll tell you when. And it's, it's going to sting a little. Guys, when can you mimic a relationship like a marriage? When can you actually start thinking about marriage? Guys, when you can lead her spiritually. When you are in a spiritual place where you can lead a daughter of God spiritually. When you are willing to lay down your life for her. When you care more about her relationship with God than you do her body. When you take care of her, when you can take care of her financially. And a quick run to Chick-fil-A and spending $12 on the Chick-fil-A is not a financial stable, ladies. When you can do all these things, gentlemen, and you find yourself one day, you wake up and you find yourself a man of God, you may then pursue the idea of serious relationships. Girls, when can you truly take care? When can you think of, um, girls, when can, you, when can you think of marriage? When can you think of serious courtships? When you can truly take care of a man for better or worse. When you can follow and lead spiritually. When you can discern whether or not a male is an immature boy or a man of God. Does that matter to you? When you have worked on yourself so much that you are finally becoming what Proverbs 31 says that you should be as a woman of God, that is whenever you can consider having a serious relationship and pursuing a courtship to get to know someone and to pursue a permanent future with them. But until then, guys and girls, you have a lot of work to do on your own self. I want you to think about this reality of dating. What does this reality of dating mean for you? The three things, have a simple relationship, edify each other. Hang out with someone, don't go too far, but you can hang out with someone and get to know someone of the opposite gender and practice interacting with them. That is what God wants your dating relationships to look like. And I love you students, but if you're in a relationship, that has gone too far, it's your responsibility now to change it. It's your responsibility now to change that. And I know we got super serious with this one. Normally I'm a little bit more goofy with different lessons. I want you to understand how important this is. That's why I'm being so serious tonight. This is a serious thing. Dating around, fooling around, sleeping around, getting emotionally invested in guy after guy after guy after guy, that can hurt your marriage and hurt your relationship with God. It can hurt your future. Take um, Take these into consideration, these ideas, and think about what dating should be. And I want you to do this before we meet tonight. Jot down about five or six things of what dating is. When you look around, you look at your friends, what dating is, Then jot down about five or six things of what dating should be based on our lesson tonight. I'll see you tonight. I look forward to talking with some of you all about this, and uh, we'll do our breakout session then. 
But love you guys. I'll see you later.